Hi, my name's Terry Bobby from Levels Above the Rest. Today we have Alex Ida in the building for us from Cheltenham Town Football Club. Uh, today he'll be giving us an insight on his journey from grassroots right away to the top of his game as a professional footballer now today. Um, so take us through, uh, just give us a little bit of insights of how you started um, as a footballer, or well, when you started as a footballer, to brief insight your journey so far? Like you said, from grassroots, um, really started for me going from year six into primary school. Manager at the time recommended me and my father to go and find a team and play some grassroots football. Um, went into Ridgeway Rovers and this was at the time where the transition from seven aside to eleven aside was happening. Seven aside, I didn't really get to grips with it, you know. I was used to street football, playground football. Yeah. Didn't really get a chance, didn't grasp the, co the concept of passing if I'm honest uh, mm. didn't realize it was a team game yeah was yeah, used yeah. to playing in a foot uh, football in a primary school and doing skills whatnot so then really got my chance when we went into 11 aside did a season there I scored yeah. a, a number of goals I think 56 goals um, Ooh, yeah okay but it was yeah. a time where no one really again grasped grasp the concept of it and it would just stay on the halfway line wait for the ball to be booted over the top and try and score, like you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Was privileged enough to go into Arsenal at first. Went into Arsenal for a week or two. And then at the time, a scout called Dave Britton, he originally tried to take me over to Chelsea, but um, my dad said it was too far. So couldn't do that. And then... Sorry, Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, he then moved over to Spurs. So I went to the, the development centre at the start. Was there for one day and they said, nah, uh, move him into the academy so was there so the development center worked for you then yeah the you know you, yeah. yeah it was just i was there for one day played a few games dave because he was quite a new scout at the time um got a second opinion on myself they said yeah take him in um went into spurs was training for a week and a bit and then was fortunate enough to be given a deal wow so that's my journey at Spurs. Worked under some good managers, if I'm honest, but it came to a time where there was no pathway for myself. So I got released. After being released, I went to various clubs. I went to Crystal Palace, I went to Peterborough, mm. just to name a few, um, gave different reasons, you know? Um, some were saying I was too small. Some were saying that they had players already in that position. So it was sort of a hard time for me at the start, you know, not being able to be given a particular point that I needed to improve on yeah. you know some people were saying too small that was out of my control yeah. some people had players already um, so it was a difficult time went around went around couldn't get anything matter of fact I actually went into Blackpool and they were one of the teams that said I was too small <laughs> yeah eventually signed me so I went into then Sunday league football with my friends finding my passion again enjoyment again so hold on you got released that under 16 yeah we'll recap all this in a minute so you got released at 16 didn't get a scholar didn't get a scholar went into Sunday league football so I'm, I'm guessing you went straight into college yeah I went into sixth form wow. you know I studied PE applied science and business hated every minute of it still <laughs> football was a route that I was trying to discover but the pathways were looking very slim if I'm honest mm. um, played in a few showcase games so if I'm totally honest with you at that point I'd given up you know just a passion of mine I played for my sixth form team and just played with my friends for enjoyment. Um, one day I was at school, I got a phone call from my agent. If I'm honest, I didn't even know he still represented me, you know, because I was thinking, I don't play for a team. He you called... must have been a hell of a player type agent, didn't it? Yeah. Like, didn't <laughs> so, <laughs> so he then said to me, oh, Blackpool want you down. And I said, why do Blackpool want me down? Like, I've already been there. They said, I'm too small. I haven't grown like mm. to be six foot three all of a sudden. That day I had to plead with my dad to let me go. He wasn't too sure. He was like, focus on school. <laughs> I had other plans. So I went into Blackpool, fortunate enough, played a trial match, impressed in training. I think I scored a hat-trick on the first game. There's a manager uh, called Jamie Shaw. Continued playing and then they said to me they wanted to offer me a contract. So at the time I was 17, already did one year at sixth form. Yeah. And by age I would have been a second year scholar. So they proposed that they offered me a scholarship, but at the time the secretary and the club had decided that wasn't a route they wanted to go down because it would have been me being like a third year scholar. scholar yeah. um, so then they said to me, listen, sorry, we can't do anything for you. Continued playing. Jamie said that he would recommend me to some clubs that I played against and done well against. So again, it was a time where I was like, do you know what? So I've just, yeah, it went straight forward. forward. I've wasted my time. But then fortunate enough, Ian Holloway said he'd watch me play football. He was intrigued by my football background, like being at Spurs. And then he just said to me, listen, we're going to give you a pro. And I said, wow. Oh, wow. 
Um, it was a great opportunity for myself. So a different man's opinion had to change the yeah. whole scale of it. Wow, wow, Which wow, is wow, wow, wow. fortunate for me in that case. You know, some people don't get the chance. Fortunate enough to train with the first team, being um, involved in like various things like their shape, whatever. It mm. broadened my knowledge, if I'm honest. Uh, train with the first team while playing youth team games. So. That's my effort. That's it. <laughs> 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 Last question, yeah. Ian Holloway took keen interest in the youngsters, so I was fortunate enough to be watched by himself. And then he then said, Yeah, we'll offer you a pro. During that time, I trained with the first team while still being involved in the youth team, which I had the, uh, the likes of Matt Phillips, Tom Ince, Kevin wow. Phillips to learn off, you know, they were really good with well, me Kevin as a youngster. Yeah, Kevin Phillips was there, you know, legend. Um, so it was a it was a good time for myself, um, being in. I <laughs> look. <laughs> Why is this love in the background? <laughs> so yeah, it was a good time for me, if I'm honest. Um, fortunate enough, at the end of the season, they extended my professional contract. Mm. So this was my first full season with the first team. Um, the pathway was a bit hard if I'm honest. We had three different managers at the time. Oh wow. Yeah, Ian Holloway left to Palace, Appleton came in, then he left to Blackburn, then Paul Ince came in. Um, at the start it was quite posit positive. Mm. Paul Ince knew quite a bit about me. Um, so I thought, yeah, this is my opportunity. Okay, yeah. But at the time we was in a struggling position. We weren't doing as well as we should have been doing with the quality we had in the dressing room. So yeah, come the end of the season, he said there was no pathway for me. Um, that hit me quite hard, if I'm honest. But he said to me, listen, give me a call in the summer and I'll get you another club. Is that Paul Ince? Yeah, but at that time, you know, you're young, you sort of have an ego. So I thought, do you know what? You've just released me. Why do I want your help? So I thought I could do it by myself. Mm. Um, after that, got a phone call from Matt Williams, the club secretary, who said, Lane over and want you to go down, you know, AFC Wimbledon's there and Barnett's there at the time. So it was optimistic. Um, at the same time, my youth team coach had gone over to Southport. Okay. That was in a conference prem, but I was quite young, naive. I didn't know anything about the conference, so I dismissed that straight away. That wasn't even something you like, yourself, I yeah. Your conference yeah, I, to be honest, I didn't even know what it was. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? At the yeah. time, you know, Blackpool was a championship club, been releg oh, relegated yeah, 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 from the yeah, Premier League. So yeah, yeah. if I'm honest, I was only looking at like Top the champion, yeah, yeah, you know, um, which is looking back is, very naive for myself. Um, so said no to Southport, went into Leighton Orient, everything was looking good. Went to a pre-season tour with them. Wow. They loved the fact that I was a local lad from East London. Got right till the end, we played South End. I thought I was getting signed, if I'm honest, and they turned around and said, listen, where we're at, we sort of want a, a more experienced winger, a more experienced striker. So I said, fair enough. Then went to AFC Wimbledon, Went into AFC Wimbledon and trained with the 23s. Mm. Um, looking back again, I went into the 23s, trained, and then I said to the 23s manager after, like, where's the first team? I said, I've been with Blackpool's first team, I've been with Leighton Orient's first team, like, AFC Wimbledon, like, I expect to be with the first team. Um, maybe it was the way I delivered it, he didn't like it. Went home, got a phone call from my agent and said, oh, what, what went on, you know? The gaffer said that you're a bit arrogant and you're big time, so there's no space for you at this club. Wow. Uh, which I was taken back by, you know? I didn't mean to come across that way, but I guess there's a way you deliver things, and I've learned that certainly as the years have gone on. So, had no options at the end of the summer. My agent at the time advised me not to go into non-league and said it was, it would devalue me. So I was literally sitting at home, working by myself, doing my own bits, but there comes a stage where, you know, you don't, you don't see anything happening. I needed a job, I needed some sort of income, so I did a bit of coaching on the side. Yeah, then I found myself going into Braintree. So I went into Braintree. Um, the, person, the person that met me at the gate was the groundsman at the time. He said, it's nice, isn't it? And I said, yeah, yeah, this is, it's nice. He was like, you know why the pitch is so nice? I said, why? He said, because they don't play the ball on the floor. It's always in the air. And I just thought to myself, what? I, that what, is bad, you know. <laughs> I just thought to myself, what am I getting myself involved in here? Like, what is what is this? So I've entered the training, the training ground, which yeah, was the stadium. <laughs> um, already at that, I was I frowned upon it. I was like, why are you training at the stadium? It's grass at the time. Yeah, grass. Wow. 
so then they said to me um okay. training was at seven i think like seven half seven mm. and i was thinking why are they training at night like i'm used to training at daytime, daytime yeah. 10 o'clock start or whatever why am i here at night so the whole thing was just going through my head i was thinking what am i involved in then i understood you know it's non-league football part-time part -time football people have jobs on the side and i was like wow like these guys are like to, if i'm honest i thought credit to them like you're working you're playing football like how do you possibly do that yeah, yeah. because i was in this bubble and i didn't know this side of football if i'm yeah. honest with you um so let, let, let me pull you there we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna slowly break down your your, your story so you started off grassroots playing normal so yeah. got signed at tottenham under 12 right way through to 16 got released obviously it was a, it was a, they released you i'm guessing at a late time it's hard for you to find a club or get a scholar to be fair, they, they did alright in the sense that they let me know quite early. You know? Oh, they know early. Yeah, okay. they let me know quite early, yeah. And then did you, was you able to find clubs to go into at that time? Or? Yeah, do you know what? I, that wasn't really a problem, finding clubs to go into. It was just, it was just fitting in, fitting into their system, the system, their style of play, you know, and adapting to it. Uh, that's the bit I found quite hard, if I'm honest, yeah. Okay, so what kept you going out? Because like, I'm fascinated about the fact that people get knocked back and manage to get back up and actually get back themselves back in system but not just get themselves back in the system but hit an extra 10 miles 100 miles on it as in yeah. getting pros playing making first team debuts like yourself scoring goals from being a kid that someone said you're not good enough like what made you push yourself what pushed you to, to get that in? and did you see yourself ever playing as a pro footballer after you got released was your mindset still that strong if i'm honest in terms of being a professional footballer, that, that wasn't my aim. I just wanted to play football at the highest level possible. possible yeah. So where I was in the non-league scene, I just wanted to play in a conference prem. That was my aim, if I'm honest with you. Um, luckily enough, I, I did a little bit more than that. Um, but I sort of flipped the negatives into positives, you know. When someone said to me you, I wasn't good enough, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to prove you wrong. And it was that, that determination that kept me going, if I'm honest. Where did that, that determination come from? I, I don't know. I think it's something within, you know, yeah. um, just a mindset. And I was uh, stubborn, and it was just an ego thing. If I'm honest, I was just thinking like, who are you to tell me I'm not good enough? I like that. Like, I like, I like that. I like that. I like. You know, that. <laughs> like, well, why, why do you have that opinion? Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. And then I just thought to myself like, there's so many teams, there's so many managers. Everyone's got their perception of how football's played, mm -hmm. how they see it. And what they like, what they don't like. It's 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 like you, you know. Yeah. Some some of you have your favorite food, you know. Some of you don't like McDonald's, but you prefer KFC. But there's a reason, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> different flavors. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> exactly. Different flavors at the end of the day, you know. And at the time, it was like people were saying I was too small, but Spain were popping everyone. So I was thinking, look at all of these guys. They're not big. Yeah. So why can't I do it? And it was just other people's stories that inspired me, you know. Okay. Even people like Ian Wright. I'm an Arsenal fan, you know. Okay. Ian Wright, his story inspired me. Um, so you, you looked up to other other football yeah players, definitely you know yeah, yeah of course you know because people often think things are impossible until they're done then, and it becomes the norm you know yeah. so i look at like the non-league scene now and i say all of these players that are pushing on you know mm. at a stage it was like non-league people didn't even look at it okay, now yeah. but the way the world works now and the way there's so much talent in non-league football it just proves like you, you can't yeah. give up you know you never know who's watching you at the end of the day wow because um, you mentioned on, on the fact that Blackpool originally said no. Yeah, look until at that. Ian Holloway came and said yes. Yeah, so, so it just... It, it goes to show it, it, it literally is a game of opinions. opinions. Yeah. So, had Holloway not got involved, the, the, the youth team leader, etc., who's in charge of making decisions about giving scholars and pros would have initially shut the door on you again. Mm. Wicked. So, so. Uh, me, I find that amazing. I, I, think that's, I think that's crazy. Now, fast forward everything. Um, we know you've you done really well in the, in the non-league scene, but I know you, you did travel. Yeah, I travelled. I was a bit of a, a, few, a, a bit of a journeyman. We call you a bit of a traveller. Yeah, but, um, definitely. You spent your last season not only at Merchant Tan. Yeah. Uh, I know you had a good one in the FA Cup because you was live on um, beat. Was it BT Sport? BT Sport. BT Sport yeah. 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 Was... Uh, I can't remember the team you played against, but it was yeah, it was, it was, Oxford, Oxford United. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. So what, what happened that season? Because that season got you your 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 first pro move. Yeah. Um, so it was it was actually a build up that the first season i signed i was the first team i actually played for for longer than a, a season you know so <laughs> that in itself said something you know yeah. um so it was a great experience playing with my friends 
you know, um, built up really good relationships. So doing it with almost like my brothers, you know, yeah. um, we all had a passion for the game. We all had a, a job at the end of the day. So this was us expressing ourselves and having a bit of fun. Um, so to reach the first round proper was an amazing experience. You know, again, people wrote us off. We played Ebbsfleet in the fourth qualifying round and Ebbsfleet were big spenders, a massive team. No one ever expected us to beat them, but we came together, you know, and we wanted to make history. We were so determined that we went that extra mile and made it to the, the first round proper. You know, we got spanked, I don't know, 5-0, but just the experience and to see people other teams in non-leagues, um, we just showed them that there is a way, you know. Mm. So that was very inspirational in that sense. Um, then that led on that season, I actually thought I was going to get a move. There was like, rumours and whatnot, um, but nothing came of it. So I was like, oh, OK, then it's not meant to be, you know. Yeah. I'm a strong believer in when the time's right, it will happen for yourself. Yeah. Um, so I went into the next season. Um, I had offers to go to like other teams but it would have been a sideways move, you know, so other teams in the league that were going for it and whatnot. But I just thought, do you know what? I'm in an environment where the gaffer trusts me. Um, I play a style of football that suits myself and gets yeah. the best out of me. So it only makes sense. I'm around good lads, you know, that keep me grounded. When when it's fun time, it's fun time. But when it's time to play football, play football. we play football, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that's a key thing. Um, so yeah, um, Tuesday night, coming from work, um, played Hendon at home. It was a it was a big game, you know, because again, for me, football, you're always trying to prove people wrong. You're always trying to compete with the best and you want to play with the best teams. Hendon were at the top at the time. Um, you think we beat them? Uh, to be honest with you, I think we, yeah, I think we beat them, yeah. I can't recall the score if I'm honest, but they were up there. Their front three, front four, should I say, were just deadly, deadly you know. Known in the league, I think three out of the four got moves. Is it? Yeah, um, one went to Barnet, one went to Hartlepool, and one went to Crawley Town, you know? Wow. Um, so a lot of people were watching the game, but for me, I just wanted the bragging rights, you know? My f my friend Nico was a striker at the time, yeah. and he was scoring for fun, you know? He actually got a move to Hartlepool, and I just wanted to prove that I could kick it with them, yeah. you know? Um, so I remember getting there late, actually being given the team talk in the car. There was a mad amount of traffic, and work caught me up. Um, so yeah, got on the pitch and just playing. I remember it being a feisty game, you know. Mm. The left back got dragged at half time. Your left back? Yeah, uh, their left back, because I was oh, you tear yeah, them apart. Oh, tearing God. him apart. And then. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Then the new left back came on, and his instructions was to just kick me in the air. Okay. So every time I touched it, he kicked me in the air. So I had to find a, a new way around it, you know. Um, you said that, that particular game was like a decisive game for you? Yeah. yeah. So it, it took. I learned a lot about myself, you know, um, and I had to adapt to the different styles and whatnot. But do you know what? It was a whole journey, you know, because I'd been given the coaching at the time mm. that allowed me to do that, you know. Um, so, yeah, I didn't think anything of the game. I was just happy to win. Bragging rights again at the end of it. Then I got a little phone call one day at work saying um, it was... Pete from Cheltenham Town if I'm honest oh. yeah I thought it was someone pulling my leg I didn't really take it seriously yeah. and being at work at that time I said you know what um, I can't really talk now mm. um, can I call you back so I remember going I went to work being on duty in the playground and just thinking what what is this about like I just thought yeah, oh, yeah it was going through my head and then at this t moment like all the little things again you asked me like what kept me going I think it was just like little things people have said to me over my journey like you've got ability you've you like you can do it you know so yeah that really kept me going so I just thought you know what let me have a conversation what, what's the worst thing that can happen the first question he asked me was do you want to be a professional footballer do you want to play football and I started you know I was in a comfortable environment work was going really well and I was just beginning to build the foundations you know and structures for my life you know yeah. just thinking about the bigger picture what's next in my career um, how can I improve in terms of my career aspirations? And then he asked me and I just started and I said, yeah, I do. And he said, all right then, um, well, I'll be in touch. I'll be down to watch some more of your games. So then it, it came with the pressure now that I knew someone was watching my games. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas I just used to go on the pitch, express myself and be free. Mm. And I just felt that added pressure. And he came to the next game which was a cup match. And I remember 
the first five minutes being lifted in the air and having a dead leg and I couldn't move. Oh no. But I knew he was there, so I forced myself to play on. I didn't do myself justice at all, you know? I went in at half time, got subbed, and I just thought, you know what, this is it, you know? I've, I've blown it. Wow. So all sorts of things were going on in my head. Um, then again, I received a phone call, you know? Mm. From himself saying, nah, they're still keen, they're still interested. And I thought, why, how can you possibly still be interested, yeah, you know? Yeah. I think then doubts were going on in my mind. Um, when he said, you know what, we want you to come down, you know, tell us how you feel about that. And at the time, work and football, I just thought, how am I going to do this? You know, how, how am I going to speak to work and tell them I've got a football child? They're going to look at me thinking I'm crazy. <laughs> but I went in there and luckily, um, head teacher at the time, Mr. Conley was really supportive of myself. You know, he said, go and chase your dreams. You know, he said, you have conversation with boys on a daily basis and you, you, you tell them, follow your own advice, mm -hmm. go on, go and do it. So that gave me a great encouragement and a great deal of confidence. So I went into training at Cheltenham Town. Um, the first day, if I'm honest, I didn't enjoy it, you know? It just took me back to what, what's involved in professional football, yeah. you know? At the end of the day, you're going in there trying to take someone's position, you know? Yeah. And at the end of the day, they've got a family. So there's all of these things that people don't see, you know? Yeah. They're fighting for their lives every single day. They go into training, grafting to get into the team and play football because at the end of the day, the more games you play, the more, the, the better you do, the more recognition you get, yeah, you know? Yeah. So um, people like don't, stats yeah, the stats and things like that. So people don't recognise that um, everyone was on each other. The standards of training was higher. The, the demand levels were higher, where it was a bit easy ozy in non-league here. The demands were so much higher and I, I felt a bit of pressure and I didn't know how to deal with it, you know? Mm. Um, if you know me, you know like I'm a player that likes to take people on. I sort of went into my shell, was passing sideways, and I just thought, oh, yeah, oh, this isn't for me. I straight away doubted myself, called my dad and said, this isn't for me, dad. And he said, well, you know, just, just see how it goes. You know, it's an experience in itself. You know, you're going to learn about yourself here. Um, so I went in to the gaffer's office after and he started talking to me. And if I'm honest, the conversation wasn't really positive. You know, he was saying, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't do this, you know. He was a bit off it, da, 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 da. but then he said something to me at the end, he said, I sort of expected it. And I was thinking, what, you, why did you expect that, you know? And then the scout at the time said to me, Al, oh, the reason why I liked you and I took to you straight away is because your first touch in the game, you went forwards. When I watched the other wingers, they went backwards. He said, your actions were positive. What you were doing was positive and you had a little feisty side to you and I, I liked that. So again, from all that was said, I took the, posit the positives out of that conversation. So I went board, into, yeah. yeah, I took it on board. The next day I went into training and we did 11 v 11. And at the time I played against um, a left back called Ilias. I think he was on loan from Brentford at the time. And the lads were telling me how good he was. He won like nine MOMs on the spin. So I was thinking, okay. wow, like what a challenge. But I embraced it, you know, and I thought, you know what? Um, let's see what happens. And I took on board what they said about being positive. For the first 10 minutes, I don't think I touched the football, you know? And I was thinking, oh, how am I going to get on it? How am I going to get on it? And then, fortunately enough, I got the ball, looked up, took him on, beat him, crossed it in, and the boys were like, what? Like, you beat Ilias. Like, how are you beating Ilias? So everyone gave me a little ripple. Then from then onwards, I just started getting the ball, started getting the ball, and then I was just positive in every action I did. And then, yeah, the boys, I think I built up a little, not, I built up a little, what's the word? Like. A, they just took to me yeah. from that moment onwards, you know? Mm -hmm. They said, you know, he's got a little bit, let's give him the ball. Then we went into a 1v1s with those that weren't playing or that weren't going to be in the squad. Oh, Lord, it was cut to them yeah, you know, yeah. I was a little yeah. bit nervous, but went into it and did well. And then come the end of the day, they had offered me a contract, wow. which I was quite taken back by. Um, didn't know what to think of it. I was all sorts of emotions. I was thinking, what's my parents going to say, mm. what am I going to tell work? What was it, one year contract, two year contract? Yeah, it was, you know, it, it took a little bit of time to negotiate because I had to consider the fact of work, my living arrangements and whatnot. And yeah. they offered me a one year deal. I was fighting, if I'm honest, for a two year deal because again, I was leaving a stable environment to go into football and with the ups and downs I already had. So you, you had to risk it all for yeah, a one year deal? I had to risk it, you know. So um, you know, you knew coming back in there in the summer, it, it, it's not it's not playtime exactly. yeah head down. yeah so throughout that yeah. summer i worked my socks off did extra fitness because i knew the levels would be the levels and the demands would be 
definitely a lot higher than what I was used to, you know? Madness. So, yeah. So, take us through um, your first goal at, uh, oh, maybe your first goal. Let's say, what's your most memorable goal that you've uh, scored uh, at Cheltenham Town um, so far? I know, I know you scored quite a few. Yeah, you know, um, the first one's always good, you know. Um, I wasn't playing at the time and came in in FA Cup and made quite an impression and scored my debut goal. So I think that really was the platform for me and the foundation. Mm. Um, so that's a memorable goal. But going into this season, I think the most memorable goal that I've scored is uh, against Swindon Town in the FA Cup. We sort of went in with the underdog mentality, Swindon on fire, um, received the ball down the line from Chris Hussey. <laughs> and then it was a time where I'd been isolated with the fullback quite a bit, but I always went down the outside and I said, you know what, this time I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I looked up, he backed off, took it into the penalty area, hit it and it went in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually won that game. So that was a very memorable moment for myself, if I'm honest. Yeah, wow. definitely. What about um, your best assist? I'm thinking of um, the one where you, you set the ball up for Nigel to... Yeah, uh, that was... I'm on a hell of a bullet head of a Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That game was crazy, you know. Um, we played against MK Dons on Boxing Day. MK Dons were flying high at the top. We were near the bottom of the table. No one expected us to do anything. Um, I just remember Fozzie doing a diag into Tyrone, something we've worked off. Um, and then the big man flicked it down to me, ran onto it, um, looked up, um, taken on the 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 defender put in a ball and at the time everything happens in sort of slow motion yeah, I put yeah. the ball in a box and I'm thinking what's going on here Nigel's just ran from nowhere and just Rised it, yeah. <laughs> just jumped so high I've never seen anything like it you know and just like boom it's in the net you know yeah, the, the whole crowd going the, crazy the celebration was classy yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel doing a little dance no yeah. that was that was good times yeah, yeah. definitely uh, Alex, so um, what top tips would you give to a winger? Obviously, you're a winger um, and out winger. Uh, sometimes you're not fighting. What, yeah. what, top three, what three top tips would you give to the aspiring young boys who would lo love to be a winger that are watching here today? Um, I'll definitely say, um, as well as attacking, you need to know your defensive duties. Mm. Because one thing that I've learned is that if your team hasn't got the ball, yeah you can't get on the ball and do your stuff. So you need to understand your defensive responsibilities and you need to help your team to get the ball back so they can get you on it, so you can do your stuff. Okay. So that's one thing I've definitely learned. Um, watch people in higher leagues, watch people that have sort of been there and done that and just take what you can from them. Okay. So definitely watch the Premier League players, watch those that have won things and those with the top stats and just see what you can take from them. Um, Another thing I would say is, I would say just be positive in your actions, you know. Um, I would say take it to fullbacks. You know, you might not beat someone three times, but the fourth one, it, it's going to count, you know. Yeah. Um, and just keep keep doing what you're good at. Ad identify your strengths and weaknesses and go from there. From there. Yeah, definitely. Wicked. Al, it's a pleasure having you today. No, anytime. And, uh, we'll definitely look up soon. Yeah, yeah? thank you. Talk Cheers. Thanks, thank man. you for that. Cheers. Cheers. Let me get the laughters at that. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, blood. Don't make me laugh today. Love this guy. <sighs> I don't look blicking in it. Man said I don't look blick deep. <laughs> 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 this guy, man. Uh, when you're ready. Having lost the last two, Layston, they'll be looking to. Like you say, bounce back tonight. It's Alex Adai who's shot from far out, and it's a wonderful goal from Alex Adai. And Merston take the lead at the Merck side as they all run over towards Mick Sullivan, the assistant manager.